Welcome to the International Move Summer Series of my podcast. Today, I'm going to walk you through some of the things we have to do for an international move that you don't normally have to worry about if you have to move across the United States. There are some crazy rules and extra steps that we have to go through just to move across the ocean. So let's get into the episode. This episode of the Creative Home Podcast is brought to you by the top 10 home staging tips. Home sellers, are you worried about all the work you need to do to get your house ready to sell? Wonder where to get started? I was in the same boat and realized I did the same things each time I had to sell my house. And each time I did these staging steps, my house looked move and ready and I sold my house faster each time. I share these tips with my clients now too. That is why I created the top 10 home staging tips to sell your home faster. It is a guide to get you started on things you can do yourself. Download it for free today at bit.ly forward slash top 10 home staging tips or see the link in the show notes below. Hello and welcome to my creative home podcast. My name is Kasha and today we are talking about the initial out processing and moving bumps when it comes to an international move. So we are moving from Germany back to North Carolina in three short weeks. So there are a lot of things we have to do in a short amount of time. So let me share with you some of the things that we've had to go through, what I do with my process to kind of help me stay sane and keep on track because there are just so many things going on. So we really actually only got our military orders um, about a week ago, not two weeks, maybe um, since like it was mid June. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we basically got about 32 days before we were supposed to leave. Yeah. <laughs> Craziness and for an international move. So as soon as I knew that was happening, that we we're going to do that, I started my own master to do list. Okay. Cause I knew there were certain things that we had to do first that predicated all our steps after that. If we didn't have this done first, then we couldn't move on to the next thing. So we had to do a lot of planning. And oh, by the way, my husband has three different out-processing checklists on base. Not just one, three. Yeah, I know. So he has to go run around base and go to do things like go to the post office, go to the library, check out this and get this kind of thing signed off on. So there's lots of things for him to do that also affect us. Okay. So the first things we did have to plan out and kind of know in advance because we knew what our final date was to leave was to get the moving mover moving company scheduled because that has to be done. We have to have movers scheduled. That gives us time to um, us to pack up our stuff and put our stuff in suitcases that we want to take with us um, because we are not going to see our stuff for at least two months, if not longer. Seriously. Yes. Um, that's what they're telling us. So if we have a mid-July move date, we'll be lucky if we see it sometime in September, end of September, and we'll be there in July. So basically what we have in our suitcases is what we've got. Yeah. So do some quick planning, right? So the moving packing date is a big one. Um, plane tickets is the next big one that we had to figure out. Okay. So what time, what, um, what's the flight schedule? What's that going to be like? because we really didn't want to get that scheduled and nailed down so that we knew, okay, well, if the movers are here, then we fly out a couple, like a week later or a couple of days later, because you don't want to move and leave right after, because you still have other things you have to do once the movers pack up your house. Okay. And the other big one is, um, shipping our car, actually two cars. So yeah, that's a really, really big one. So one um, we bought, well, we both of them bought, bo- bought both of them here in Germany. One was a brand new one and one was a used one. The brand new one came with, um, its own shipping thing that was free, basically. Um, there are some shipping fees, like minor, like less than 500 bucks is what we're talking about. Um, not the thousands of dollars that it costs to ship a second car on your own. Okay. So, The new car is taken care of, but we do have to take some steps. I'll talk about that later. And then the other car, we get one free car through the military to ship. Okay. If you have um, another car, you know, that is not with the free one, 
um, that can cost you, like I've seen people saying it costs like $3,000, $5,000, even maybe even more just to ship a car overseas. So yeah, you, <laughs> it starts going through your cash flow very quickly. So we do have to plan out our time. And like I said, we had four weeks. So I printed a monthly calendar, like an empty one to schedule and see all the things we had to do. And I had my master to-do list basically. And so I took my master to-do list and then plugged it in what days I knew I had to get things done by just to keep us on track. So let me share with you some of the things that are not a normal CONUS move or continental United States, where if you move from like, we move from Virginia to North Carolina, not a big deal. Bigger deal if you're moving from like Virginia to California. Yeah, it's across the country, but it, it's not a big a deal here. Like I first started about with the car shipping. Okay. So that is not a normal thing. Normally you just drive to the next location, right? <laughs> exactly. I'm like, you hop in the car, you load up your car with stuff that you don't want the movers to take, right? Or they won't take. And you hop in the car and you drive. Well, can't do that here. So we have to plan out when we want to ship it because it gets to the United States about four to six weeks later. So we're shipping my car out uh, this week um, so that by the time we get there, by the end of July, beginning of August, we have a car because when we show up in mid-July, we're going to have to rent a car, right? So you got to time that so you're not renting a car and spending more thousands of dollars, right? So yeah. So planning on when you're going to ship the first car, because then you're down to one car for the whole family. Yeah. And when you have five people in the family, that can make things a little interesting, especially when you have to get other things done, like pick up medical records and things like that. So anyway, so you have to plan out when you're going to ship the first car out. So you actually have a car on the other end closer to when you show up on the other side. But not only that, we also found out we need something called marine insurance. What the heck? Yeah. So that is insurance for when your vehicle is out in the ocean and just so uh, you know, it protects your, the price of the car, the car, get it, you know, um, a full price value of the car by, uh, in case it sinks or something or gets damaged or, or, or whatever, um, that insurance is required before you can ship it. Luckily, it's only 0. 0.0053 times the value of the car. So 0.53% of the value of the car. So it depends on the value of your car. But it, you need to have that. Another thing you have to do is that it needs to be detailed, cleaned, and washed, including the engine bay. Yeah, you got to pop the hood of your car and degrease that sucker and make it look all shiny new. I know, right? Yeah. Another thing we have to do is make sure there's a quarter tank of gas. So if you filled up just before you need to ship it, guess what? You need to go run that car around and go drive it around until you about have about a quarter tank of gas. Luckily, we didn't fill up too much and... We're good to go on that part. Another thing with the car shipping is there's lots of paperwork that they want. They want the title of the car. They want the bill of sale. They want the invoice. They want the registration, um, a picture of the passport, your flight information, all that stuff. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> okay. So I have it basically to ship my car right now. I have a whole packet of everything just stuffed in one envelope so that I have it all in one spot so that when we do drop it off this week, it's all in there and um, I don't have to remember to go get it because I checked off the checklist because they sent me one. So there's that kind of paperwork. There's also some money we have to pay in cash. Um, there's a port fee we have to pay for. We're just going to have them detail and wash it. Um, so yeah, so there's a couple of things that we have to pay for in cash for that. And then we have to deregister the vehicle from the German system. Yeah, because there's a German license plate on there. Uh, so just like the DMV, kind of, sort of, but yeah, we have to do that beforehand, before we, you know, change over, you know, so normally you, when you're traveling across the country, you wait till you get to the next DMV, right, to your next location, and go register your license plate there. Yeah, but here we have to do that beforehand. And we get temporary plates, so it's not a problem. So that's all the things for cars times two. <laughs> right yeah so car number one will be shipped this week car number two will be shipped a couple of days before we actually fly out and leave germany so that's the first part the second thing that we have to do that's not normal although it is because we're renting a house is that we have to notify our landlord through um, official german mail like registered mail basically or in person 30 days prior to our move out 
So while that's normal, if you're renting a house, you notify your landlord, right? Um, but we do have to do a pre-move out inspection with the landlord three weeks before we move out. So we just did that with our landlord. Um, and because there's all the furniture is in place, nothing has been moved or anything. You really can't see much. But, you know, the in the contract, we actually had to have a special base contract um, that was signed three years ago. And it tells us what needs to be done to get our security deposit back. Okay, so the same thing. We have a security deposit just like you do in the States when you're renting a place. Um, and in there is basically just make sure it's clean, things are painted because this was a brand new house. Um, so everything, basically there, there are going to be some scrapes. We know we've already seen it on the walls, um, like where the beds are and like along the staircase and things when furniture was brought up. So yeah, so there's going to be some scrapes. So I have a painter that I need to come over and, and do all that. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So notifying the landlord, um, normally he is nearby, but he actually is with his um, sick mother who lives 500 kilometers away. Uh, yeah, so he has to take the time. I have to. I texted him saying, hey, we're going to send you this official mail just so you know. Um, we need to have you come down. When's a good time? Normally, the landlords are pretty much close by, so you can do it in person, but I had to do it through official German mail and let him know. Okay, so yeah, so that worked out really well. Wasn't any issues with the pre-move out inspection or anything. Um, okay, so as we moved along, one of the other things that we had to do, you know, you have to close out your accounts, right? Utilities and internet and stuff like that. Well, the utilities is one story. The bigger problem issue is our internet account. I actually had to go to the on-base translator because if I tried to call the German company that does this, they don't speak English. It's an automated thing all in German. And I don't speak German, even after the three years. I'm like, mm, no, I'm not that fluent. Yeah, can't talk technically. No. So on base, luckily, they have a translator. So I had to go make an appointment with the translator, bring in the stuff. She told me then she had to write up a letter because it's the internet. So with this specific company, we had to write an email and then with a signature and then with a copy of our orders and what date we needed to do it and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, my gosh. She goes, oh, well, and if you have the equipment, you need to ship it back to them. I'm like. Yes. So all in German, of course. Yeah. So we got the account number that we needed to put the email together. She wrote it up for me. I sent it off, got it registered in the mail too, because who knows if the email was sufficient enough. I at least had it registered through the German mail system. So luckily we got a response uh, about a week later or so in the mail from the internet company saying, hey, we received your request. Of course, all in German. Google Translate is my friend. And then um, they gave us a shipping label to put on the box that we need to send back for the internet and, and do that. I'm like, great. Okay, good. Phew. All right. So that one's, that one's good to go. But the other thing we have to worry about is the other utilities are the um, uh, gas and electric, right? So those two, we have meter readings that we do every six months and send those into the company because what they do here is that they don't give you an exact bill each month based on your consumption. They kind of average it based on what you send in the meter readings for every, like I said, every six months. So at first it was like 70 euros a month. And then because that was the first time ever for the house, we didn't know, we just kind of guessed. It actually went up to like 90 euros a month per utility. So yeah, so just to give you an idea. So again, it's an automated and then at the end of each year then we kind of do a resolution at the end and kind of go hey your yearly total yeah we took out 90 euros a month but you actually spent more overall so you need to you know take some money or we'll give you a refund either way sometimes it depends on the year right so yeah so that kind of makes things complicated because we have to keep our german bank account open for three months after we leave for the final bills because we don't finally get, we don't uh, do our last meter reading until the last day that we actually hand over the keys to the um, to the landlord. I know, right? You're like, wait, what? <laughs> so there will be a bill later coming our way. <sighs> Frustrating. I know, not a normal thing for us. So then the next thing we also, like I mentioned, keep our German bank account. A foreign bank account is not normal. Normally we have, you know, USAA, or if you have Fidelity Bank or other bank accounts, whatever it is, 
um, but we actually have a foreign bank account just to do all the transactions like sending our landlord money it goes through this German bank account so what we have to do like I said is we now have to keep that a bank account open for three months after we've left and so we do the internet gas and electric through that it's an automatic you know download that comes from our account but then the water bill and the waste is through the landlord who also does a yearly review so come january february march time frame or so is when we normally get the bill from the um landlord to let us know hey you use as much water and the the trash pickup and all that stuff you need to write me a check or send me some money for x amount of dollars and that's happened every year. We always had to owe more than what we expected. Okay, fine. So yeah, so there's going to be some bills later on that um, yeah may or may not happen. <laughs> it may take a while to get to us. Okay, so that's not a normal thing that we've had to worry about, right? A um, couple more things that we have to worry about now is selling anything that's 220 volt. Because we have bought, you know, kitchenware, not a whole lot because I didn't bring um our 110 things and i didn't buy a big huge transformer that then sucks energy because that's just ridiculous so we bought like five or six smaller kitchenware type things like a crock pot a toaster a blender you know so now i gotta go sell all those things or donate them to the thrift store whatever it may come you know so anything that's 220 my vacuum cleaner that's a 220 <laughs> so now i have to get rid of all these little things right so that's something i need to work on uh, another thing we have to worry about is the mold in the bathrooms. Because there are no fans in the German bathrooms, you have to crack open windows um, to vent out the humidity out of the bathrooms. And if you don't, then the mold grows on the tile walls. Well, then you have to go clean it. Well, with luckily it's just vinegar and you scrub at it and get it off. But if you haven't done it in a while, it builds up and now you have to go do it before you move out. So you got to take care of that. So that's another thing to worry about. That's not a normal conus move issue, especially here, because in Germany, they rarely have air conditioning units in these houses. So, and then the last thing that is not so normal for um, a conus move that is very normal for an international move is shipping alcohol. Yeah, because normally we just, whatever alcohol we haven't drank or whatever, you know, wine, bottled beer, whatever, we just throw it in the car and drive off and drive off to the next location, right? Because the shippers, the movers, they don't pack those things up. Or if they do, it's not a big deal. Well, here, it is a big deal. It's a really big deal. So big that when we had our appointment for our moving pack out date with the transportation people, they said, here's, uh, if you're going to be shipping alcohol, here's what you need to do. I know, oh, by the way, each state has its own rules of other things you need to do on top of just this. So the first thing you have to do is you have to have take an inventory and it's a detailed list by name of the wine because normally it's just wine really beer not a big deal name the size of the bottle the color like red white rose wine whatever the year and the cost and you have to write that for every single bottle you want to ship and i'm thinking here going <laughs> okay i luckily do not have a huge wine collection friends of mine do they have like 200 bottles or something crazy like that I'm like oh my god yeah that's that's not worth it so I'm looking at our little collection of a couple of wine bottles here and there that we haven't drank in a while or some beer and I'm like you know what yeah not worth it to have to put do a whole detailed inventory can you imagine oh my gosh so we're gonna drink some of it some of the things we you know we won't be able to drink but he says well you know what you can put a couple bottles in your checked in luggage when you move I'm like oh yeah, we might just do that too. So there are going to be a couple bottles in our check-in luggage that um, they're going to take the trip. Otherwise, we're going to drink it or just dump it or whatever. But otherwise, I'm like, I am not coming up with a list of shipping alcohol for like 10 bottles or whatever it is. I'm like, nope, not worth it. Forget it. Mm -mm. So yeah, so those are just some of the not so normal international move things that we have to worry about right now. Um, and then on top of that, you have the other normal stuff of like school records, medical records, things like that, you know, clean that, having the cleaner schedule, let a painter come in. Those are normal stuff that you have to do. But these eight things I just mentioned are not normal. And I'm sure there'll be more other things to, to worry about too. Um, but yes, so I just wanted to share with you those things that we're dealing with. Um, that if you ever contemplate moving internationally, it's not a big deal. Just be aware that there are going to be some crazy rules, 
extra steps that you have to take in order to get either overseas or from overseas back to the U.S. that um, is really eye-opening that you don't realize. You're like, okay, not only do you have to deal with just normal moving crap that you have to deal with, but everything else on top of that. So hopefully this gives you a better idea. Um, and this is why I haven't been, you know, recording because we've been busy traveling to get our last trips in before we can before we have to move and can't take care advantage of all these fantastic European trips and stuff like that around here. Um, but yeah, but I'll do another episode soon to let you know how things are going as the shipping of the cars continues, the pack out dates and all that fun stuff and what other stumbling blocks I may run across. But I hope this gives you a better idea. And if you are moving this summer, know that I totally feel you. I understand where you're coming from and I'm right there with you. Okay. I hope you guys have a fantastic week and a fantastic summer and I'll talk to you later.